from County College of Morris. This is CCM All Access. Hello, and welcome to CCM All Access, the show that brings you news and information from the County College of Morris. Students at CCM, members of the community, people doing good things. I'm Daniil Barkov, and I'm very pleased to have Professor Maria Raspoli here with us tonight. Uh, Professor Raspoli teaches in the English and Philosophy Department here at CCM. Welcome. Hi, Daniil. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm so honored that I was asked to come on. Well, of course, we would have to have you on. Um, so I do have some questions I would like to go get into. Um, could you please uh, tell us what you do here at CCM? I'm an adjunct professor, uh -huh. as you said, in the Department of English and Philosophy, and I teach the Composition II course. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I also understand that you are also a high school teacher as well. I am a high school teacher, a 15-year high school wow. teacher. Okay. Fif well, yes, 15 years of teaching high school. And how long have you been teaching at CCM? This is my third semester. So third semester. I taught a fall semester, yes. a spring, and now I'm in the fall again. Okay, and you're only teaching one class at a time? Or? Just the one at a time. Mm -hmm. It seems to be about all I can handle. Yeah. Because you have a really full plate with all the high school classes already. and Yeah, Yeah, and I can really spend a lot of time changing a syllabus. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, one. One is okay. Are you were you considering at any point maybe moving uh, to like a full time stu uh, sorry full time teacher here at CCM or you know I actually in, uh, got a degree in um, educational leadership mm -hmm. just in 2018 at Seton oh, congratulations. Hall. Congratulations! Thank <laughs> you. So I have actually um, for anybody out there, I now have my principal's license and my superintendent's oh, wow. okay. license. I've been interviewing in a lot of different districts mm -hmm. across. North Jersey primarily, but even the State Department of Education called me in. Wow. But um, so far, I am my, um, yeah, striking out. So as, uh, well, I, I, I'm sure you'll uh, get the job eventually. I know you very well, so I think you'll definitely get it. Um, but where, um, so where do you teach high school, if you don't I, mind me asking? Actually, I teach in Roxbury. I teach, okay. I live in Sakasana, and I teach at Roxbury High School. Have you only taught at the one school, or have you transitioned from school to school? I graduated in the middle of a year. So I graduated mm -hmm. in January of 2005 from Montclair mm -hmm. State. And I actually took a job at a school for children who had really serious behavioral issues oh, wow. and some involvement in the criminal justice system. Oh, wow. And that job was open, of course, because mm -hmm. um, everybody else had run screaming yeah. from it from September to December. So I graduated, you know, December, and I walked into that job the day after, like January 2nd, 2005, and into a cl mixed classroom of mm -hmm. students. They ranged from 14 to 18. Oh, wow. They all had um, some involvement mm -hmm. in some difficult activities, mm -hmm. and uh, that was what I did until June of 2005. Wow. And I was lucky enough to get a job much closer to home. Mm -hmm. So do you think that experience affected the way you teach? That experience 100% affected the way I teach, <laughs> and I still think that um, I'd like to say, like, they're my people. Mm -hmm. Those are my people. Yeah. Um, what I really learned from them was that unless you develop a relationship, there is mm -hmm. no learning that is going to happen. Yes. Um, I also learned that you have to really give respect to people first before you expect to get it mm -hmm. in return. Uh, I think too often that uh, we're conditioned when we grow up to believe that, you know, we should get Mm -hmm. automatic respect, but I think yeah. uh, respect is something that is built on a day-to-day, -day, mm -hmm. moment-to-moment yeah. basis. So do you think that experience was, uh, it was definitely challenging, I, as I can imagine, but do you think networking now in like CCM and then transitioning to the other school because of how difficult that was, it made you a better teacher? I, I think that absolutely. I yeah. think every challenging student makes you a better teacher if you are attentive yes. to that yeah. challenging student. Mm -hmm. um, I come, you know, from it from a rather interesting perspective, which mm -hmm. was that I loved school. I mean, I was just the nerdiest <laughs> nerd of all. Um, in third grade, I had my mom write a note to my teacher saying that 
Maria doesn't feel she's being given enough homework <laughs> and would like some additional <laughs> challenges. My mother still said it was like the most embarrassing note that she ever that she ever wrote, but I really did love school. Mm -hmm. However, when uh, my family had some issues, yeah. and um, in about the ninth grade year, it was like a perfect storm of events mm -hmm. that overtook me. And I actually did not even really make it through the end of ninth grade, I don't mm -hmm. think. Um, I dropped out, wow. spent a number of years um, I like to say mooching off my mom, working some minimum wage mm -hmm. jobs, and then I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the light bulb yeah. moment. It was, oh, you know, you really need to uh, mm -hmm. do something. Yeah. So it took quite a while, but when I was 24 years old, 25 mm -hmm. years old, wow. with three children, I brought myself up here to County College of Mars <laughs> with my GED in hand and said, do you, do you think I could become a secretary? Mm -hmm. and, they, and that was where I started. Mm -hmm. I started in a program intending to be a secretary. Mm -hmm. And I had this great intro to business teacher. And he said to me, like, secretary? You want to be a secretary? No, you're going to need to have a secretary. <laughs> and I just was like, stunned because you know I probably had a really low self-esteem at mm -hmm. the time um, I think it's kind of hard to you know come up with uh, a GED and always kind of feel like you're the dropout yeah um, and then as I got luckier you know and moved into some of the classes um, that I was really looking forward to mm -hmm. like the reading I had some real professors who just drew something out of me that I mm -hmm. never thought wow. um, was there. And I, I'm going to specifically call out um, Professor Andrew Downey, who is deceased. Mm -hmm. um, professor Downey was my American literature professor. And he began the survey course mm -hmm. with the question, who am I? And he taught me that, you know, we find ourselves in literature. Yeah. And in finding ourselves, we grow and become fuller and you know, yeah. more complete and more happy human beings. Um, uh, Professor DiMatteo was just amazing. I took her for uh, the intro to the short story. I think I had her for composition too. And uh, of course, my probably one of my all time favorite people and definitely a huge inspiration and somebody that um, I'm always I want to please this woman more than anything <laughs> in the world is Dr. Janet Eber. Oh, wow. And Dr. Eber is the chairperson mm. of the English and philosophy department. And I had a world literature course with her. And I just thought she was the brightest, most impeccably dressed, most <laughs> refined human being I had ever met in my life. And I just, like, yeah, how can I be? Wow. And I will never be, because I'm not <laughs> everywhere near refined enough to be Dr. Janet Eber, but Dr. Eber, people like us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that was a little bug. Um, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's um, so you're basically you're saying that these professors drew something out of you where, at a point in your life where it, it mattered more than anything, and you, you found this career path, and you, you enjoy it. Correct? I absolutely love it. Yeah. what I do. Um, mm -hmm. By the time, I, it took me nine years to graduate from CCM. By the time I, mm -hmm. I actually had four children by the time wow. I graduated. Um, after my degree at CCM, I earned a BA at Montclair State University. Mm -hmm. I earned a master's in the art of uh, teaching and um, assessment and uh, curriculum mm -hmm. at Mary Grove College. And then I just earned my educational specialist degree in educational leadership mm. management and policy at Seton wow. Hall University. Oh <laughs> I know, right? But this degree, this CCM degree, this nine-year journey mm. is the one that I will always be the most proud of because it was earned, you know, one class at a time, mm. one step at a time, yeah. one professor at a time. So did you, when you were basically deciding what you were going to continue the career after the whole secretary and you uh, got, yes. uh, you know, motivated to become an educator, <sighs> did you want to go specifically into high school education or did you always kind of consider doing uh, At college? At that point I knew 100% that I wanted to be a high school teacher 
and I actually remember here I took uh, it was really I think when they began the, like a, a, a teaching program and it was with I want to say his name is Thomas Burke mm -hmm. and he asked you know why do you want to teach and I said you know I feel this is a a vocation yeah. see what happened to me I described that perfect storm that led to me dropping out of high school yeah. early um, was what really um, compelled me to say I'm gonna reach my hand out and say hey kid how you doing yeah. let me go find someone yeah. like me and like a lot of people that I know who just didn't feel that high school met their yeah. needs but I still think it's the most important place to be so my yeah. job in my mind became to keep people in school yeah. I think uh, a lot of people I guess underestimate what one person, what kind of effect they can have on a person, and specifically when they're going through turbulent times or a point where you feel like you have no hope, you know, and that one person just kind of reaching out and helping you up is, I think, a really big difference, specifically for students who are young and just don't really know what they want to do with their future. Yeah, and that, like we had, uh, I had you for class uh, our first semester, and I think you kind of did that with me. You uh, motivated me, and I think you motivated a lot of the people in the class. And I think you are one of the special professors that does that. Yeah, I really do want to thank you, but I enjoyed doing that because what I enjoy is seeing somebody who has the potential and has the dream, but just isn't quite sure how to go about and get it. And sometimes, you know, shoot themselves in their in their own foot, but. What we really are trying to instill is that we get up when we fall yeah. and we move forward mm -hmm. and that when we make these mistakes, we learn from them. You know, we use them as experiences to to build ourselves into yeah. the people that we want to be. I mean, I think one of the problems is that there's this idea of uh, perfection and what we have to accept is that we are never going to be perfect. We're always growing into a better version of ourselves but too many people think when they've made a mistake that that's it that they're out of the game mm -hmm. and, I, and I think just our job as human beings is to reach our hand out yeah. to people and pull them back in and then teach them how to get up yeah. themselves the next time. I think also going through situations like that it, it, it makes your skin tougher you know and it makes you puts you in a position where I think you understand what other people might be going through and it's important for them, and it's something that you wanted when you were younger, and reaching out to that person is definitely very beneficial, both to both them and I believe you as well. I think that also when you say skin tougher, yeah. you do also have to understand that you're going to have students who really love and appreciate that, and you are going to have people who absolutely despise yeah. you. Because there are, you know, not everybody wants that, yeah. you know, that much that immediate of a of a reminder not everybody is ready to take the challenge and and you did yeah thank you so much well we're going to take a quick break and then i would love to discuss this some more with you thank um you. and now we're going to take a quick break uh stay tuned we'll be right back i'm andrea lucia a graduate of county college of morris at CCM, I gained a high-quality education, was involved with clubs on campus, and performed university research in tissue engineering. My CCM education prepared me for ongoing success. Today, I am at Cornell University, studying engineering and performing research in cardiac tissue engineering. The professors and staff at CCM helped me to start right and finish strong. And we are back on CCM All Access. I'm Daniil Barkov, here with our professor, Maria Raspoli. So thank you so much again for being on the show. And um, I believe the conversation we were having in the first segment was, I think, very important to a lot of students. So I'd like to get more into your teaching styles okay. and how, uh, I guess, your, your life developed you into the educator that you are now. So I know you, are, uh, you have a... Um, a very particular way of how you draw out the best in students. So can you tell us maybe what what kind of styles or techniques you've developed throughout your career that you've seen the most effect on students? Oh, I'm going to tell you one thing is you need to bring some passion <laughs> to your content area. Yeah. You have to really love what it is that you are trying to teach your students and you also have to understand its relevance yeah. 
in the real world because not all students see the relevance of a certain content area. Very few people nowadays are seeing the relevance of classic literature yeah. to their lives. So, uh, one, I have to absolutely bring the, the passion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have to know that content really well. But I also have to teach students to understand that what we're studying literature, these are the voices from the past yeah. who are commiserating with us about our lives. And, and they're also trying to send us messages. They're trying to send us warnings. Yeah. And they're telling us that though there may be tremendous progress in this world, at heart, you know, all human beings, regardless of the, the God that they pray to or don't or the color of their skin yeah. or their gender um, or who they love, we all have the same experiences yeah. and we have to learn, you know, from each other. So I 100% think it's passion. Yeah. The other is really trying to show the value of this understanding yeah. in our lives. And, you know, third is the that concept of like collaboration and discussion and the critical thinking mm -hmm. and insisting that your voice in this classroom actually does matter. Yeah. Um, your sense, your perception, your interpretation, mm -hmm. your ideas, who you are actually matters. And when you can make people feel like um, they matter, mm -hmm. they take the course, they take the yeah. work more seriously. Um, I th my students know that I know when they're late. <laughs> they know <laughs> that I know when they're absent. Yeah. And that means they know that they mean something. Um, I also make, and I will just try this really hard, Denio. Yeah. <laughs> I work very hard on learning students' names. I yeah. try to know them by the second class. If I don't have them by the second, it is there by the third. Um, so I actively demonstrate mm. that you are more than just, you know, a number on yeah. a roster. Uh, you're a human being. I'm a human being. <laughs> We're going to be together for, now it's 15 weeks, not 16. Yeah. But we have 30 sessions to be together. Um, and for you to learn to be the best reader and the most <laughs> clear and concise and <laughs> well-argued yeah. and evidence-based writer that you can be. Yeah. So uh, you, I think that that little aspect of you know getting yourself personalized with the student is definitely very important. I know, uh, I think it brings out a certain motivation, like you said, in, uh, in students because when there's that one person giving you that extra attention and they're saying that, oh, uh, that's super interesting, I want to know what you have to say, and kind of on that topic, do you, have you learned anything from your students since you've been, uh, oh, you've been working? Yeah, yeah. I, I have absolutely <laughs> learned uh, so much yeah. from my students. Um, one of the, one of the things that uh, I have learned is th exactly what we're talking about, which is that you know knowing who I am yeah. really matters. I mean, we cannot assume that all people came to school um, with the same base knowledge, um, yeah. the ba same base foundation. Um, we cannot assume that all students have access to the same resources yeah. and there can be some challenges in making sure that you meet everybody's needs but you can't just assume that everybody has those same foundational skills mm -hmm. which means that uh, sometimes you actually have to go back whether you like it or not yeah. and fill in for some missing 
gaps. I mean, it might be nice to say, oh, I'm not supposed to have to teach them that. They were supposed to learn that in, yeah. you know, high school or in comp one. But uh, if they're there and they got to you without having it, yeah. you need to um, check what you're doing and work with them to, you know, make that better. Yeah. So do you actually, on that topic, do you find since being here for the three semesters, have you found that some, some skills that students might be lacking, uh, have you found ways to make, possibly transition that to your high school classes to prepare them more for, for college? I'm actually, on a, on a very large scale, worried about um, the, ex the lack of extended critical thinking mm -hmm. um, and intention spans. Um, yeah. I'm very concerned about people wanting to just kind of like fill in blanks and rather than generate um, and generate an original idea or tap into their own creativity and curiosity. Yeah. Um, it is something that I'm working on, I think on myself on a daily basis as well as with my students mm -hmm. here and with my students in high school. Yeah. Um, I often think about uh, Fahrenheit 451 mm -hmm. and a character named Faber says that, you know, what we really need is good quality information. Mm -hmm. We need the time and the leisure to process it and to digest it mm -hmm. and to think it through. And, and then we need to know that we have the power to do something with what we have learned. And I just think that we all, uh, that we need to work on that yeah. a little bit more. We need to take a step back and ponder. I mean, this might sound a little bit crazy because I mean, I, I'm, no, and I'm not blaming tech. Yeah. I'm not blaming tech at all. I'm blaming the way we use tech sure. in um, almost compulsive ways and we're looking things up that, you know, may maybe we should actually like think through it or have a conversation with yeah. another human being yeah. who may be able to offer us another an perspective inside, yeah. or an idea uh, to know that t together yeah. we are more powerful than alone. Yeah. So it's, it's something I'm actually worried about and actively working on everywhere. Yeah, I, I think I, I do agree that I don't think it should specifically be blamed on technology. I think it's definitely a big part of it, but it's I think it's the access and the comfort that all this provides. And it's basically the quicker you can get the information, the quicker it goes. But I think the quicker it leaves your mind as well. And I think, too, the quicker we are to accept sources that aren't quite valid yeah. <laughs> sources. So um, there's really been like this push back against education and a, against reading yeah. and, and as though it's um, dirty or as though yeah. it's bad to learn or bad to read or yeah. um, we have to really work on where that's coming from and um, you know who's giving us information I think one of the most valuable skills that I teach is for people to question yeah and I do think I remember in particular in your class getting very upset at one point where nobody was asking anything. And I think I remember saying, I am going to lie. I am going to throw lies in. And if you don't call me out, you're going to go home believing these lies, regurgitate them on a test, and you're going to be wrong. Yeah. That's an impressive strategy just to... Oh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you want to pay some attention. Yeah. Pay some attention here. Challenge. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to be wrong. Yeah. But be, I, I keep saying, be wrong here yeah. so that it can be corrected yeah. because otherwise you go home thinking you're right and you come back in and you're wrong when it matters. Like the classroom, in any classroom, you should feel safe enough to fail. Yeah. Safe enough to be wrong so that somebody can correct you <laughs> yeah because usually on a, on a normal daily day day-to-day -day basis we kind of believe the first information that we get into our minds and it's uh, i think that's definitely that's a good way to show students how 
you have to, I guess, double check, even with sources and stuff. I know a lot of students don't want to use them now, and it's mainly just Google something really quickly, but that's a great way of showing them how. You know, who's behind it and what is, what is their agenda does yeah. matter. And, I mean, check mine. Yeah. Check my agenda. <laughs> I'm okay with that because yeah. I'm going to check yours. Yeah. <laughs> and we, you know, we... Once we have and we've established this sense, oh, I can trust it. Okay, good. Yeah. Then you, then we're okay. Yeah. But we need to collaborate. We need to think more, and and we need to stop making everything happen so fast. Yeah. We have to learn how to embrace time again. Yeah. So uh, before we finish up our segment, do you have any advice you could give to younger students or maybe adults who are deciding to go back to college or pursue a career? Uh, I. Yes, it's yeah. going to be. It is one hour at a time, one you know study session at a time, one test at a time, one credit at a time. It doesn't matter as long as it's a steady stream of forward motion. We can't give up on ourselves. Um, we have to move forward. Yeah, thicker skin like I said before. But I would like yeah. to thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I think this was, a, this was a great interview. We've uh, been waiting for you for a little while. I'm happy we actually got it set up. I am so proud to have been asked and to sit with you. And Thank you. All right, well, thank you so much again. Uh, this has been another edition of CCM All Access. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time.